So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. If there's anybody that doesn't still know me, I'm Ellie and I'm an ordinant here. I've been with Ian since Christmas. I might be with you a little bit longer. It remains to be seen. Um, I was warned this morning not to preach for too long. Alan has told me that there's a, a trap door that opens for me to fall through. And apparently Bobby likes to heckle. But as a teacher of 20 years, I'm well used to hecklers, so I'll be able to deal with that. As long as there are no rotten tomatoes, we'll be fine. So I'm going to share a reflection with you this morning on that passage from John. I wonder if you've heard of a man called George Muller. He was um, a Christian evangelist in the 1800s, around the same time as Charles Spurgeon. Now as a young man, he and his wife started their ministry when they opened their home to 30 orphans. And they found over time that they needed to home more and more children, so they've started to fill the houses in the same street. This was down in Bristol. Now, it wasn't long before they had indeed filled most of the street and they just didn't have room for any more children. That and the fact that the neighbours were complaining about the noise. So they started to build large buildings in Bristol. And during this whole time, George Muller says that they never asked for money and they never went into debt. So how did he do this and to what did he attribute his success? Well, George talks about the fact that he was a man in constant prayer and scripture reading. He started to read the Bible every day and instead of going to the commentaries, he felt that the more he read the Bible and invited the Holy Spirit in, the more the Bible would speak to him, God's word becoming alive. In fact, he recalls that later on in his life, he would read the Bible in its entirety four times in a year. And as he did this, and as he became a man of prayer, he says, I received real strength for my soul in doing so. And indeed, he was witness to many miracles, constantly coming through at the last minute. He recalls a time when they were sat at the breakfast table, the orphans were there praying, and there was no food in the house. And as they finished praying, there was a knock at the door, and the baker appeared with enough bread for everybody. Moments later, the milkman appeared. His cart had broken down outside, and he needed to be able to give his milk to somebody, so he gave it to the orphans. So there was miracle after miracle. And George says, there was a, da a day when I died, died to self, my opinions, preferences, tastes and will. Died to the world, its approval or censure. Died to the approval or blame, even of my brethren and friends. And since then, I have studied only to show myself approved unto God. George Muller was a man who served God and followed God. Now in this morning's Gospel reading, we're reaching a pivotal point in the book of John. Jesus first of all announces that the time has come for him to be glorified. The arrival of the Greeks wanting to see Jesus signifies to him that the time has come for him to die to all of mankind. He says, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will also be. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now as we read this, Jesus is first of all talking about himself. He is the seed that dies in the ground. And we've got a bit of a paradox here. The wheat is fruitfulness that comes through death. As the gardeners among you will know, when you plant seeds, they don't remain a seed, they die to self, they change, and then they become a fruitful plant. But Jesus seems to be saying as well that those who love their lives are going to lose them. But those of us who hate our lives in this world, well, we're going to keep them for eternal life. And there's a call to serve him, 
and to follow him, not just to come and see him like the Greeks did. So why should we hate our lives in this world? How do we do that and what's it mean? How can we serve and follow Jesus? Well, I believe we've got a choice. We have a choice to serve and to follow Jesus. And that means giving up our own selfish desires, thinking about what we want all the time. And it's not that we're actually hating our lives. What's happening is that we're seeing the futility of living for this world alone. We understand that there is life eternal beyond. When we love our life, perhaps we could see it as the fact that we're concerned with where we want to go on holiday, or where we want to go out for dinner, or where should I go and do the shopping this week, or how should I spend my money. Rather, I think that God wants us to be concerned, first of all, with the matters of the kingdom. Now the thing is, when we serve and seek God first, there will be discomfort. There will be a lack of security. It might mean moving into the unknown. It might mean challenge or change or growth, spiritual. I know for me that when I was called into this ministry and to start my ordination training, I've never felt so uncomfortable. I come from a Baptist background, the type that you probably really dislike with the happy clappy hands in the air, which to me was an absolute joy. And God's called me into the Anglican church, which for me is quite uncomfortable and different. And it's a change. But that's God's calling for me, that's where he's placing me and it calls for me to serve him. In Mark 8, verses 34 to 35, Jesus says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Now we're not really losing our lives. What's happening is we're giving it to God to be used by him. We're saying to God, I'm here for you, to be used by you. And I believe that in return we receive joy and peace and hope and fulfilment and purpose. But in order to be able to serve him, we've got to be listening to him. And that means we've got to be people who pray. We've got to be people who read the Bible. We need to be listening to the, ser the sermons and thinking, how do I apply that in my life? You see, George Muller, he chose to die to self. He said, God's plan is that there shall be none of self and all of Christ. This is the way that God succeeds and gains conquest over his own people. I believe that above all, this is a message of love. God loves us so much that he doesn't want to leave us where we are. He knows his plan for us. He knows what's good for us. He wants to bless us. He loves us so much that he's chosen to die like a grain of wheat in the ground, to be lifted up from the earth in order that he can draw all people to himself, not just the Jews, but the Jews and the Gentiles, those Greeks that came to see him. And this is his selfless love for us. So this morning, I believe that we have a fresh choice. A choice to think, am I serving God? Now for many of you, you might have been Christians for a long, long time. Maybe you gave your life to God many years ago. But have you taken bits of it back? Are there bits of it that you perhaps don't want God to have control of? Your finances or your possessions? Your service in the church or your love of others? Your active Christian faith, which is lived out through the week. Muller was available to God, and he saw so many extraordinary miracles. So let's pray this morning. And I'm going to use Muller's words as we take that choice afresh to serve and follow God. Let us pray. Father God, as we take a fresh look at our lives this morning, May this be a day when we die, die to self, our opinions, preferences, tastes and will, die to the world, its approval or censure, 
die to the approval or blame even of our brethren or friends, and show ourselves approved by you as we choose to serve and follow you. Amen. Amen.